What is up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the F1 22 career mode journey, the My Team series, where we take Porsche to the very top. Or shall I say, we take Marduk Motorsport, sponsored and endorsed by Porsche, not really, um, in the virtual world, and we are going to see if we can get ourselves a constructor's title this season. Now, as you can tell by the title, we have some news. That news being that Lewis Hamilton, as of today, has announced his retirement from F122. All right, everyone can uh, breathe a sigh of relief. He is not retiring from real life just yet. But this will be the last time we see him in F122. He is calling quits on his career at the end of this season. Currently down in P10 in the Mercedes. He's not having a good time with things, being beaten out by his uh, Mexican teammate Sergio Perez. And, yeah, he just doesn't see a way out for Mercedes, and he is calling time. Fair enough. No more Lewis after this race. But we're going to see if uh, we can do something uh, in Lewis Hamilton's last season. We're currently in the title fight at this stage. We're doing okay. We're there or thereabouts with Fernando Alonso. It's been a very up-and-down season. It's not been very consistent race to race. Uh, still have five rounds to go. Um, so, lots to play for, certainly. Uh, we need to keep up the momentum in terms of upgrades. We are running out of them now. So, these next few races are going to be bitterly important to make sure we can get some points over some of those uh, top-running teams. They still have more potential in the locker, I'd have to say. But uh, I guess the bigger issue in this season, if you've been following it closely, is the tyre regulations. The tyres have been absolutely brutal uh, in terms of actually making them last a stint. We've had a few races now, but we've had some punctures. It's going to be raining this weekend, so hopefully the weather can lighten the load on the tyre uh, spread that we use over the course of the race. But um, as always, tyres will be the talking point. Let's head to... The Japanese Grand Prix, where, again, we make big strides on the leaders. And now, we might be able to fight consistently. Before we get into qualifying, it really helped me if you guys could leave a like. If you haven't already... Make sure you subscribe to see plenty more F1 22 videos. I imagine in the next few days, I'm hoping this week, we're going to hear an announcement on F1 23, the brand new game. Hopefully get some screenshots or something. There's been some rumors flying around. So make sure you subscribe to be the first to see what is coming with the new game. Anyway, it is time for qualifying now in this Japanese Grand Prix. We are piloting our bright yellow and black Porsche Marduk Motorsport Machine to hopefully a driver's championship this season. B fighting away with Fernando Alonso, who seems to be uh, just dominant in both uh, this career mode, in, in real life to a degree, in that midfield, and also an F1 manager, which wrapped up the other day. Very sad to see that go, but we're going to be trialing some more episodes on the second channel. Link in the description to that if you want to see some more manager content but um yeah p7 we slide through this qualifying session quite nicely we're into q3 which has um been somewhat of an anomaly for us lately we don't really uh feature in the final part of qualifying it, the car has just kind of been all over the place the ai have been very strong and my teammate this weekend especially is very strong uh i think he got p2 in that uh, q2 session we back it up with a 27.5 in q3 and uh, we're going to have to find a little bit more time, in fact, a lot more time, if we want to be challenging for pole position in this race. So here we go for our final lap in qualifying. It is the final set of soft compound tyres attached to the car. Car is fueled up for one and a half laps, so we should be able to get this one in quite nicely. Checkered flag has now dropped, and we are five tenths up on our previous best. Let's see if we can back that up as we head into the middle sector. Absolutely flow the car through there. It's uh, really satisfying to drive with these upgraded career mode cars. You've got uh, so much downforce now. Straight line speed is in abundance. The battery, oh my word. I think the battery is the biggest thing. You can be very, very greedy on that, especially in the races. And it, uh, it, just, it just deploys, deploys all day. 
and recovers so nicely compared to the online car. But we are almost 9 tenths up, approaching 130 are completely flat out in these cars. Battery is still well over 50%, braking for the Casio Triangle. Now the final chicane, clobber a, uh, a bollard on the inside as well. That tells you that you've hit the apex. Bit of wheel spin on exit, up to the line. Do we get pole position? I think we miss out. I think we have just missed out, and it's our teammate, Teo Porsche. The rookie, the debutant, halfway through this season, has got himself his first pole position in Formula One. This dude has only done a, a handful of races, and now is starting P1 in the Japanese Grand Prix. We've only just kind of got the car into a competitive realm that can kind of mix it with the top teams. This is the closest we've been. The entire game cycle, to be honest, all these three seasons leading up to this, we are now finally within touching distance of the top teams and our teammate strikes straight away. It is an ominous sign of things to come. Teo Porcher is the real deal. We replace Mark Webber for lacking pace and Teo straight away doing a great job. It has to be said, doing a piastri at McLaren, showing glimpses of that potential. Let's keep it going for the race, where hopefully we can get a 1-2 for Marduk Motorsport and maybe be in the discussion for potentially taking back this Constructors title. Let's get into it. Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Isa Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today at the Japanese Grand Prix. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Teo Porsche lines up on pole position and Benjamin completes the front row. The rest of the grid doesn't matter to be honest. Welcome guys to the start of the Japanese Grand Prix. That man right there, I bet, is ruining his decision to turn us down and stay in a backmarker team. We are now at the front of the grid now in Marduk Motorsport. I offered Piastri to sign with me only a handful of races ago, and now we start one and two. Welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix. It's actually good to have my voice back. Don't know if you could tell, in, in a few of the videos we've had so far this week, I've not been at 100%, and hence why I haven't been able to do a full-on... Um, expressive commentary um, like like this one in my team. These post-commentary videos probably take the most out of me, so I need to be 100%, 100% and uh, I'm glad to finally kind of be there now. So excited to have this series back and uh, excited to see where this story goes because it's such a tight battle between ourselves and McLaren for the fight in the Drivers' Championship. I'm fighting two cars for that championship, maybe even a third now if Teo Porcher can get involved. But, you know, if Teo can lift his game for the rest of the season, then it's not completely out of the question that we might be able to fight for the Constructors. So, need big points today. We need to convert. It's one and two. Um, it is raining as well for the start of this race, and I don't know what the form guide is going to be like. We've gone for a dry setup. Five red lights, and away we go for the Japanese Grand Prix. Hopefully no center and Prost moment into turn one. With my bad start, that is certainly not going to be the case. You can see the Alpine of uh, Kevin Magnussen trying to have a go into turn one. I've understeered massively. I've understeered the, <laughs> the Red Bull of Leclerc off the circuit into turn one. And we managed to maintain P1 and P2 in this Japanese Grand Prix. This is exactly what we wanted. We are going to be a little bit slow as we get up to speed with this car. Uh, low downforce and I'm running like I said. I think it's 26, 22 wings. Um, a wet setup or an intermediate setup would be probably 10 clicks higher than that, to be honest. But, um, you know, we've gone for the dry setup. We've gone for straight line speed. We will be difficult to overtake from the AI, I hope. Uh, we're going to have all the battery to deploy to defend against these guys. So it's just a case of early doors, just getting used to the uh, capabilities of the car, the tire, finding out what the, the, the limits are in terms of how much grip we have, and then just building our stint from there. At the moment, Teo is right on the pace, right on the money, as the AI are. Um, they're bots. The AI, they are always going to be perfect from word go. A player will never be able to do that, so... Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a struggle street uh, for the, through the early stages of this race. Teo has already built out a 3.7 second lead at this stage. He is mighty quick in Sector 1. I'd imagine that's due to the extra downforce that he's running, but we can reel it in a little bit through uh, Sector 3 and the start of Sector 1. But um, 
Yeah, we are really losing out on the corners at the moment. 130 R here is not even flat out either. That's a downshift and quite a significant lift as well to get through that corner. And that's with even with all the downforce upgrades we've had applied to this car. Weight reduction, the, um, the chassis balance stuff as well. This is a really well-rounded car. And still, even in the wet, we can't go um, as fast as you think through some of the high-speed corners. Anyway, this is Max Verstappen. He's moved his way up into P3 now ahead of his teammate Charles Leclerc. Magnussen dropping back to fifth. And we are barely struggling to stay on the circuit there, even with a, a big downshift to seventh. But uh, doing enough at this stage. The lead is blown out to 6.3 seconds. Taylor Porsche is in the mid-38s. We're in the 40s. We cross the line and we're still in the 40s. So we're a second and a half off Teo Porsche's lap times every single lap. We are really helping this guy to his first victory in Formula 1. That's a VSC. Uh, for Nicholas Latifi, who I believe has retired from the Grand Prix. So this will be a chance for us to gather our thoughts, save some fuel, save some battery, and kind of get going again also as well. We can't be overtaken through this first sector. So that gives us a little bit of breathing room. And uh, we'll go again once the green flags are waved once again. But in terms of strategy, um, we are going to have to box again for intermediate tyres. Um, the, the, the rain is going to last just over half the race. And... Unfortunately, the uh, the Inters won't go that far. As you can see, uh, Verstappen going clean around the outside on the restart, getting the better traction, the better drive. Oh, we're going to lose the back end. We're onto the grass, and we've done a whole 360. We've lost the place to both the Red Bulls. In fact, a whole bunch of other teams as well. We're down to P9, and this is all down to the poor restart and having to make up ground on Max Verstappen. I was putting a little bit too much load into the tires, and it looked like the intermediates simply aquaplanes on the surface of the track, I was putting in too much steering lock and we were going too quick in a straight line to really justify the tires gripping in, biting into the surface. Once you get on the replay, you can see it's already kind of going here. But we're turning, we're turning with overtake on and just the car just lost grip. We were very lucky to not collide with either of the Red Bulls there or a barrier. We thankfully gathered it up quite quickly after the 360. And there's actually right rear contact with uh, the right rear of the Red Bull. So somehow we've actually managed to get away with that on simulation damage. Now down to P9. Charles Leclerc is out of the Grand Prix. I don't know if that's because of the contact we made with his right rear tire. Maybe it collapsed a, a, a piece of his suspension or something. I'm not too sure, but uh, that, that little contact has actually KO'd a Red Bull out of this race. Up to P7 now as we dispatch of Norris in the Ferrari. But yeah, that's absolutely wild on this sixth lap of the Japanese Grand Prix. We've got to fight back now, see if we've got the pace to actually run it with the upper midfield runners. But at this stage, they are dropping us. Fernando Alonso up to P6, recovering quite nicely after his uh, poor qualifying position. Side by side with Norris again into the last chicane. And we're able to hang on for now. But uh, yeah, you can just tell we're struggling for pace. We're finally in the 39s. But the AI have moved on into the 38s now. So it's it's just a case of waiting now until we go back to dry compound tires. We just don't have the pace. We don't have the consistency. The tires are wearing down super quick as well. Well over 50% on the tires. I think I'm probably going to box and go for an undercut here. We are indeed on this lap. Onto a new set of intermediate tyres. We're going to hope to get an undercut, quite a massive undercut on those around us. And I don't imagine we're going to be running on a drier track anytime soon. The AI will have to respond, given how harsh the tyre wear has been so far in this Grand Prix. So I uh, expect the AI in, in about two to three laps time. But by that time, I'm hoping that we'll be well clear of those guys. I'm hoping we'll be five seconds clear of the likes of uh, Hamilton, Norris, uh, hopefully ahead of Alonso by the time he makes his stop. But we've got to make pace now while we can. We're in last place again, but on fresh tyres. Here we go. Bit of overtake on the start finish straight, and now we're into 19th place, but we've got to make those massive inroads now while we can, while we've got these fresh intermediates on the car. That's a 39-0, which still isn't a personal best for us. The AI are in the 38, so currently, even on old tyres, the AI are just getting faster and faster and faster. Meanwhile, here's the leaders. This is Max Verstappen into the lane on his... Uh, new set of intermediate tyres. I think that's Norris. No, that's Carlos Sainz boxing as well for another set of inters. Let's see uh, where, we join, where we rejoin relative to these guys. And Norris is already well clear. That's Hamilton also overcutting us. 
who was behind prior to our pit stop. So I think we've just got the setup drastically wrong here today. The, the, the low wings just aren't working here in the wet. The AI are just dancing around us like we're not even moving at this stage. So we've got a serious pace issue and we've got to recover somehow, whether it be through strategy or a bit of luck later on. But uh, at the moment, we're not looking good. We, we might even fall out of the points at this rate at the halfway stage of this Japanese Grand Prix. The dry weather can't come quick enough as Oscar Piastri dives into the pit lane now for his second set of intermediate tyres. Tictum, Sonoda, Perez, Schwartzman all coming out of the lane on their intermediate tyres. And thankfully, we do get some track position back inside the points ahead of one of the McLarens for the time being. But you can see the tyres are already melted. We've been on these tyres for like five, six laps, uh, something ridiculous like that, and they're already knackered. We've got to come in again. We've got to do a two-stop on intermediate tyres. The tyre wear has been absolutely nuts in this season of career mode, guys. And uh, call me a conspiracy theorist all you like, but I'm starting to think that it's only me that's getting affected by these harsh tyre wears. You can see we go wide on the kerb, and we've actually lost our front wing on the inside barrier of 130R. We were struggling for traction, struggling for grip at that part of the circuit, and that's actually it's bitten us at this point in the Grand Prix. The safety car has been deployed, and thankfully, that actually might be a blessing in disguise in this Grand Prix, because we needed to make a pit stop anyway. We're going to get a free pit stop, a free front wing change, albeit we will be at the back of the grid, but the, the dry weather is actually only just around the corner, so change the wing, change the tyres, Rejoin in the back of the queue. Hopefully, we've got some fragments of pace still left in this race to reclaim some positions because over the next few laps, this Grand Prix is about to turn on its head. We're about to switch to dry compound tires and then, I hope, we're going to be absolutely flying. But uh, it's, not been, it's not been the Grand Prix that I wanted. Qualified P2. The weather has absolutely thrown turmoil into this race. Safety car deployed. Uh, we were quick in quality, but... Ten minutes left of this rain, then we think it's going to dry up. Ten minutes. Inter seem to be the fastest tyre for now. Ten minutes till no more rain. That's almost the end of the Grand Prix. This has to be a long safety car period in, uh, in order for us to go back to dries and make, make, a, make a time of this towards the back end of this race. But yeah, that's not ideal. The pace has just been nowhere in the race. It's normally the opposite. We're normally slower in quality and then blisteringly fast in the race and really outperforming our car. But Teo has just been leading the way this weekend. We are currently, as Marduk Motorsport, first and last right now. But, oh, no, we're not last. We're pretty much last. Albon is uh, only a fraction away from uh, making us in that uh, wooden spoon position. But let's see if we can make something of this race. There's a bit of a pile-up through turn two. So many cars involved. Someone might be out of the Grand Prix. I think it's a Williams. We try and sneak around the outside of the Aston Martin and many other cars. But uh, that is P10, P9 for us as we see a massive pile-up here at turn two. Hopefully we'll get some uh, replays from multiple angles to see actually what happened into this corner. The wide-angle shot doesn't really tell the tale. It really just shows the aftermath, so we'll have to get a, a alternative replay of that. But Hamilton, lucky to still be in the Grand Prix. It is the Alpine of Kevin Magnussen going up the inside of Verstappen and leaning on the right front of the Red Bull has actually just collapsed the suspension of the Alpine and uh, caused the pileup. He went into Schwartzman, and then it was just a, a massive pileup of cars behind, kind of unsighted because of all the spray running into the back of each other. So this Grand Prix is absolutely mental. We're going to have to have another safety car. That's Schwartzman getting caught out by the Alpine, just kind of driving horizontal to the racing line. And uh, quite dangerous at that point. Couldn't see him, couldn't dodge him. And now he's out of the Grand Prix. We've somehow moved up to P9 through all that. But um, contrary to what I was thinking, there's no safety car. There's no safety car for a 10-car pileup. And uh, the FIA, the stewards, have just said, crack on. It's absolutely fine. How much debris is going to be at turn one? Well, we didn't show because I'm a terrible YouTuber and didn't edit, put that into the edit. But there is a bit of debris at turn one. And on simulation damage, punctures are most certainly a risk. Up to the line to start lap 23. We are putting in some green and purple sectors, but we've lost so much time. 
kind of dawdling around the outside of the racing line trying to get through scot-free um, amongst all those stricken cars. So at this point, we've, we've lost the best part of 10 seconds to the race leaders, almost binning it again on the exit curb of 130R. We've got the pace to catch up to the likes of Tictum and Schumacher, but we're running out of time in this Grand Prix. It's still not gone dry at the back end of this race, even with the safety car periods. Personal best on the last lap, 37.4. The pace is improving and we are catching the top seven cars, but Gasly is also very quick in putting us under threat into the 36s now. As the track is getting drier, the fuel load is burning off. The car is responding now at high speed and feeling actually relatively nice to drive, but it's too little too late. It's that 26 from the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix. My teammate Teo Porsche is running away with his race, as he should. He's been dominant this weekend, very composed and has managed to handle everything that's been thrown at him this weekend. He actually crosses the line to start the last lap with the fastest up of the Grand Prix against his name as well. So 26 points going the way of my teammates so far. But let's see if we can hold on to it at this stage. Still no dry running. It's going to be P9 at best for us. Well, potentially P8 if uh, things can go out. You can see there the uh, sheer amounts of uh, debris at turn one. Thankfully, they're all kind of off the racing line. We've managed to clear that now with a few laps of green flag racing, but we're in with a shout here of getting Dan Tictum, and uh, given how close the championship is at the moment, every point is crucial. So we'll see if we can get close. Uh, we are actually managing to catch him in the first sector where we've been so weak today, but uh, with our low drag, low downforce, we should be able to have a good chance of actually overtaking him now into the final chicane. It's going to be a bit of a drag race on this back straight. We get a nice run out of Spoon Curve. Nice exit on the power. Nice and early. We can't even burn all the ERS because we're recovering it so quickly. Teo Porcher wins the Grand Prix. Gets the fastest lap as well. We're going to go the inside of Dan Tictum into 130R. The, the very corner where we crashed earlier on in this race. The bravery to stick it up the inside there is absolutely phenomenal. And we are going to come away with an extra two points. Eighth place in the Japanese Grand Prix. A troublesome day but still some points. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Not much more I could have done there, to be honest, guys. The pace was absolutely woeful. Could have minimized my mistakes, but we did our best to recover. They've done it then, here at Suzuka. A brilliant win on the beloved figure of eight circuit. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, you know what they say, to finish first, first you have to finish. And that fact was clear today with lots of retirements having a big effect on the outcome of the race. As a driver, you tend to keep reliability concerns to the back of your mind and just focus on what's in front of you. But for the teams, races like this can be very stressful. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. A huge day for Formula One, a huge day for Maruk Motorsport, for Porsche and for Teo Porsche. He gets his first victory in the sport and it was absolutely dominant. Lights to flag, pole position to victory to fastest lap. There was no one who was going to steal that win from him today and we were... A pretty good wingman, it must be said, at the uh, the opening stages of the Grand Prix. We just had no pace. We went down one path. Teo went down another. And uh, he had the pace, but in both the dry and in the wet. So uh, fair play to him. He was just on another level this weekend. And it's uh, hopefully a sign of things to come. I I'd love to see my teammate be this competitive every single round from here on out. And, and we could definitely have ourselves a very formidable package uh, for the rest of the, the cars to deal with. So, yeah, um, we'll take it. It's good points for the team. Uh, not so good for the championship. Uh, Fernando Alonso gets P4 in the end. So, 12 points, bit of a gain in the driver's standings. We'll get an update on that in a second. But, uh, yeah, we managed to come away with four points, which is uh, not a disaster considering uh, the bottle that we had today se severely wedged into that inside barrier at 130R. Um... Yeah, which was not ideal. The tire wear was crazy as well. Like, there were many things that just didn't quite click today. And uh, 
We're, we're lucky to come away with the points that we did. 11 points shy of Fernando Alonso at the top of the driver's standings. Taylor Porcher moves up to P12 and actually overtakes Mark Webber's overall point standing after only three or four races, I want to say. So that is pretty insane. Uh, we should have had this guy in from the start, but um, yeah, he's uh, certainly delivering on the hype, delivering on the promise, um, taking that chance that we've given him and uh, grabbing it with both hands. 76 points shy of the Constructors title fight at this stage. Uh, P2 in the standings is definitely on now, I'd say. But uh, it's whether we can topple the might of McLaren, who are very consistent race to race. Hopefully, like I said, Teo can uh, take this confidence uh, and, and just utilize it to, to be more strong for the rest of the season. So hopefully... We're more of a threat now that we're now that we're up there. We've got a few more upgrades to do. We've got some engine stuff that we need to do. We're not quite spec three on the engine, so hopefully we can sort that out very soon. I think we've got some brake upgrades to do, some chassis stuff. Overall, not too much to do now. We're fairly close to the top of the performance pecking order. Um, but yeah, we need to make those slight gains uh, for the rest of the season. We are running out of time now. Only, I think, four races remaining in this season. Could be wrong. It's around four or five. So um, there's a lot to still play out, especially with that sprint race in Brazil. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry about the lengthy break between uh, last episode and this one. Um, oh, wow. There was that bottle as well. Yikes. <laughs> Yeah, we got lucky. We got very lucky today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys hopefully fairly soon for the next episode of My Team Career Mode. Teo is a race winner. <laughs>